for the Volkswagen Rally, the fifth round of the SA National Championship held last weekend in and around Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape. Day one of the rally started at noon on Friday with a special stage at Kings Beach. Ten more stages lay ahead in the Hankey, Longmore and Newtonhague area. 86 kilometres of special stage and 337 kilometres in total. Finishing back at Kings Beach at 9.30 that night. What are the driver's tactics? We asked Habig, Damso and Gemmel for their views. You know, we start each event with, with a mindset of winning. So that's how we start. But sometimes, you know, some of the other competitors go a little bit overboard and if we feel uncom uncomfortable with what they're doing, we might just hang back a bit and see how it develops. But generally we start off and uh, try and be in the front. Uh, we've had a bit of a problem this, uh, this season. We haven't had a very good season. But uh, this event we like to get to the end and have a good finish. We're going to take it easy the first few stages, which are mainly tar. And we have a long stage this evening, which is 37 kilometers in the forest. And it can rain a bit later on, I think. But we'll take it easy up to there and see. Current championship leaders Hamburg and Judd certainly started with a mindset on winning. Completing the King's Beach stage in 1 minute 56 seconds. No problems for Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson, who are one second quicker. Is this Johnny Gummel's idea of taking it easy? He flies over the railway lines and slides the Subaru into the left-hander, finishing the stage in 1 minute and 54 seconds. Enzo Kuhn and Martin Burta are looking for their first victory in the Sassel Dual Fuel Volkswagen Golf, and they mean business. Kuhn, showing lots of aggression, records the fastest time for the stage, 1 minute 53 seconds. A7 polo player of Hergen Fekin and Dave Likovic were five seconds off the leader's pace. Char van der Volt and Cindy Harding in the sister car were only one second slower than their teammates. Lawrence and Paisley in the A6 team total Toyota Corolla put in an excellent 1 minute 58 despite rearranging some of the furniture. First casualties were Hannes Krobler and Brian Duncan when they broke a dry shaft on the team total Nissan Sentra. Running back to the service area, the crew obtained a shaft and changed it in the stage, only to be time barred later in the day. <laughs> Special stage two and Havik and Judd in the Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen Golf need a good finish to stay ahead of their nearest championship challenges. This year, it's not their old rivals of Damso and Hodgson. But this team, Johnny Gemmel and Gideon Trollope, who at the start of the Volkswagen Rally were only 29 points behind, they win the stage and grab the lead by two seconds. That's from Enzo Kuhn and Martin Buerta, who slip into second position. Saunders and Ashley Kerrika in the team total Toyota Corolla lead the battle in N2. Hubbick pulls back a second on the leader in special stage three, moving to third. And Damso gains two seconds, moving up to second position. puts in a five minute and six seconds and still retains his first position at the end of the stage. But now, only one second. <laughs> Flat and six gear, and we see why Kuhn dropped to fourth, losing seven seconds to Damso. We view 
the scene, in and out of the car, as he tries hard to make up for lost time. Fecken in the Sassel Dualfield Volkswagen Polo player takes a seven lead by one second. While the A16 total Toyota Corolla of JP Damso and Graham Hooper lose over one and a half minutes due to a fuel problem, dropping from ninth to 33rd place. The last stage for Marrera and Duval when a gearbox problem put pay to their ready hopes. Fernando Rueda and Pete Swanepoel in the N4 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo hold on to 8th position. While Duplessis and von Westenhagen chase the N2 leaders Sanders and Herica. Jeff Mortimer and Kelly Herica in the Sassel dual fuel Nissan Sentra were one of two crews excluded due to unsigned time cards. Special Stage 5, the Aldo Scabanti Super Special Stage, where two cars run identical 5.83 kilometer courses on tar and gravel crossing over via the subway. The Super Special Stage certainly becoming a tradition and very popular with all spectators in the South African rally scene. First up, Damso and Habib. Damso now the leader, having pulled back 19 seconds on Gemmel in Special Stage 4. On board with Habib and Navigator Judd, who's emphatic about that right turn. Regains the tyre just ahead of Habig and starts a tyre wall. Habig responds with a quick trip over the sidewalls. A big slide from Habig at the flying finish. He's just one second behind the Castrol Toyota team. Johnny Gemmel takes a rather unusual route. While Enzo Kuhn takes the stage from Gemmel by two seconds. The N4 Mitsubishi of Rueda and Swanepoel takes on the A6 Corolla of Lawrence and Paisley. In car with Etienne Lawrence. As Rueda turns for the subway, we join the Mitsubishi crew. Lawrence takes the sharp right-hander as Rueda rejoins the circuit to take the stage by one second from Lawrence. The N1 Volkswagen Shore Chico of Martinez Briers and Dolph Gutier were running well, but Special Stage 7 was final. When the golf rolled end over end, fortunately, the crew suffering only minor injuries. Join us for more rally action right after the break. Day 6, and Havik now in third position pulls two seconds off second place Kun. Damso wins the stage and now has a lead of 12 seconds. Fourth place, Gemmel Subaru. Even sounds squeaky clean. Kuhn and Butter's time of 1 minute 56 was 4 seconds off Damso's pace and 2 seconds slower than his teammate, Havik. Mm -hmm. 
Pekin and Lekovic show superb form and thrill the spectators with a well-executed handbrake turn. After a 30-minute service point, the rally moves into the first of the night stages. Special stage seven, and Habeck suddenly finds himself in second position. Damso and Hodges had spun the Castrol Toyota and lost over 40 seconds. The last stage for the Subaru. Gimmel tells us why. Yeah, it was a greasy corner. The, up to that point, the road was damp in places, but not slippery like that. And then when this one just caught us out and we got stuck on the side and we couldn't get out. And we struggled and struggled looking for rocks and bits of tree and then we eventually got out there, but it's too late. Too late indeed, taking over an hour to extricate the car. No troubles for Kuhn and Butter. The Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen Golf now with an eight second lead over their teammate. You never know. Uh, which one is Yanni, Dad? Charles van der Volt and Cindy Harding are still fourth overall and leading A7. Putting in a fantastic run, Lawrence and Paisley move up to joint fourth place. Keith Coleman and Jürgen Koch had driven well to an excellent six overall. Back to Kings Beach for the final stage of day one. Hubbing and Judd in second position. Damso and Hodgson in third have fought back, having won three of the last four stages to be only 13 seconds behind the leader. With 10 seconds in hand, Enzo Kuhn and Martin Buerta are the overnight leaders, much to the delight of the large crowd. A solid fourth overall and first in A7 for Van der Walt and Harding. A great start for the Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen team with six cars in the top 10. The only casualty, Fekken, who suffered a puncture and a failed wheel bearing. The Italians Lawrence and Paisley in the Team Total Corolla hold on to fifth and lead A6. As a poppy Mitsubishi brings Raida and Swanapur an overnight eighth overall and leading class N4. Still leading in two, Dean Saunas and Ashley Kerrika round off the top ten. We join JP Danzo, who shows us that the final stage is not all smooth tar. Only 13 seconds separate the top three, and just behind them, fourth and fifth are having their own private battle. Confirmation of the class position at the end of day one, Rodney Fasaki and Carolyn Swan head A5, the Ritsons N3, and Michael Houghton, Bryn Doherty, N1. As we're in Volkswagen territory, we took the opportunity to visit Volkswagen Motorsport Voldy to find out what goes into preparing a really top-class rally car. We start off, if we have to build a car, obviously we start off with a bare body shell. Then we get involved with the drawings and the design of various parts, various sections of the car, the safety cell, at the same time, we then do the engine development in the dyno room to work on the motor, the gearbox, and the drivetrain and suspension. And then ultimately, it all gets actually put together in the work area. In a service vehicle, we would virtually carry everything related to the car, bar a spare engine. On event, you're not allowed to change the engine. You're obviously not allowed to change the body shell. 
but uh, side shafts, uh, wheel bearings, wheels, tires, gearboxes, brakes, uh, cam belts, fan belts, alternator starters, uh, you name it, you will find it in the service vehicle plus welding equipment, plus uh, various parts related to the, the engine, water pumps, etc. So, a service vehicle is actually a very nice little roving workshop. Mist over the mountains in the Longmoor Forest greeted the field at the start of day two. A further nine stages in the Longmoor, Newton Hague and Port Elizabeth areas with a finish back at Kings Beach in Port Elizabeth. On special stage 12, overnight leader Kun, determined to keep that 10 second gap, pushes on and uses every inch of the road and more. Habig seems to have had his mind on a victory and takes 14 seconds from Kun moving into first position. Damso, second fastest behind Habig, reduces the gap to second position to only seven seconds. The Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen Polo player of Fekin and Lukovic pushed very hard to make up time and almost pushed too far. Sixth place man Keith Coleman with Navigator Uwe Koch were to depart the rally just two stages later when they lost the battle with a tree stump. Dean Saunders and Ashley Herricker in N2 just keep piling it on to extend that lead. Tony Ball and Marty Oliver were another casualty when broken wheel studs left them stranded in special stage 15. Barry Krobler and Mike Burrows obviate the need for a close-up lens. We get really close to the action at Rally World. Fischer Duplessis, Thilo von Wessenhagen still chase in two but are over two minutes behind the class leaders. Trost and Savile are looking to finish after two previous disastrous events. Rodney Fasaki and Carolyn Swan leading A5 and 13th overall. Join us after the Buerta on special stage 13. Forest stages demand maximum effort from both driver and navigator as an off-road excursion can be final. The trees leave no margin for error. Habig continues to set a blistering pace and he's 11 seconds quicker than Kun and Damso, extending his lead to 15 seconds. The Castrol Toyota Corolla of Damso and Hodgson matches Kun's time and holds third position. Walton Hardin in fourth position have a 47 second lead over the A6 team total Toyota Corolla of Lawrence and Paisley. The Lancer Evo of Fernando Rueda heads in four and runs seventh on the road. While the Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen Polo player of Corpus Rus and Brendan Noonan sounds rough despite a late Thursday night rebuild. JP Damso has fought his way up to 16th, but it seems that his problems are not over. The engine dies, but nothing under the bonnet seems to be wrong. Then Damso spots the problem, a faulty trip in the car, a flick, and they're underway. But the problem reoccurred several times. Husband and wife team Joel and Annika Ritson continue to hold on to their class N3 honours in their Nissan Sentra. Michael Houghton, Bryn Doherty and the Toy Toy Spears Tez are the fastest N1 car in the stage. But overall honours in N1 belong to the Golf of Skullberger Jr. and Vimpy van Kroenen. The media challenge was once again led by Cars in Action, Michele Lupini with Steve Krobler in the hot seat. In third position, Patrick Gearing and Vincent Collins from Drive magazine. And 
Ozymandi goes on to win S20 class in this Sassel Volkswagen Golf. More familiar with the circuit racing scene, Charles Wilkin drives the Veal Castrol Toyota Media Challenge car to 25th overall. Rudy Fenter of Top Car with navigator Alec Harris finishes 28th overall. Special stage 14 and leader Havoc hits a problem further into the stage. We were struggling with oil pressure. We've got a major leak in the sump and we were losing all the oil. And while I was resetting the, the warning light in the stage, we clipped a rock and uh, got a puncher. So we struggled for 20 k's with a puncher and no oil pressure, but we were lucky to to get out the stage and uh, the guys are busy fixing it for us to continue the event. Havig loses over two minutes, allowing Damso into second spot behind new leader Enzo Kun. In car with Damso and Hodgson. Easy left, then 100, turn off, sharp left. Here, turn! Good. Sharp right, sharp right, medium left, long, fast right. Long, fast right and turn, hairpin right. Watch the turn, hairpin, turn. We've done 10 k 10. On to special stage 15 and Enzo Kuhn has a six second lead. But the Castrol Toyota team have a blistering stage and take 12 seconds and now lead the event by six seconds. The Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen Polo player of Van der Walt and Harding hold fourth place and still first in A7. While Lawrence and Paisley, 57 seconds further back, have a secure class A6 win and fifth overall. Ruedo and Swanepoel use the Mitsubishi four-wheel drive to advantage and secure N4 and seventh overall. Sixth position for Fekin, the nose of the polo player showing definite battle scars. With the cancellation of stage 16, the final stage is left Kuhn with only 7.28 kilometers to make up six seconds. We're watching Cobb, both Kuhn and Damso on special stage 17 in Newton Hay. Kuhn taking one second from the leader. The final stage of the rally at Kings Beach and Kun and Buta fighting for the win are timed at 1 minute 52. The Sassel dual fuel Volkswagen Golf of Habig and Judd in 1 minute 56 for a secure third place. Not to be outdone in front of the large crowd, Damso equals Kun's stage time. And there's smiles all round from the Castrol Toyota team. Damso wins by just five seconds from Kun, with Habib bringing in valuable championship points. Yeah, it's nice to be finishing an event and imagine, you know, to win an event again. So um, I just hope we can keep uh, going the same way. Confirmation then of the class results. Damso and Hodgson taking A8, Van der Volt and Harding A7, and Fernando Oeda getting his first N4 class victory of the season. On the championship points, Hubbig now extends his lead over Gemmel, who is now joint second with Etchen Lawrence, and Serge Damso moving up to ninth position. Things really did keep going right, and Toyota broke their drought in fine style. Join us next time.